Well, hello there. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's Virginia Clean City Stakeholder Connection with Alan from Recharged in Richmond. And he's going to give us the lowdown on the EV and used EV tax credit. If you would like to know more, please feel free to leave a comment on the video on YouTube, or you can find our emails in the video description below and feel free to send us a direct message. Um, thank you so much for tuning in. And if you are listening in the background or watching every minute, please enjoy. And like I said, reach out if you have any questions. With that, I'll pass it over to Alan. Awesome. Well, thanks, Greg, for hosting this session and uh, inviting me on here. And thanks to everyone else for, for joining here to, to really hear about Recharged and the new EV tax credits that really came about this year. To, to just start off here and talk a bit about Recharge and who, who we are. So we're a used electric vehicle marketplace on a mission to simplify EV ownership. We started Recharged because today really consumers face challenges when making an actual EV purchase. Consumers typically lack data on things like battery health. There's limited education provided by sellers. And ultimately most traditional sellers or dealers today do not feel prepared to sell EVs. We believe EV consumers are a different type of customer and buyer, and they do deserve better and a differentiated buying experience. And ultimately that led us to, to start Recharge. You wanna to move to the next slide, please? Thank you. So a bit about what we actually do and who we are. Uh, so we're a one-stop marketplace for used electric vehicles in which we try to take an end-to-end -end education first and data-driven approach to simplifying EV ownership. Our goal is ultimately to buy, to really build confident EV buyers and accelerate adoption. And to do so, we provide EV education, EV-specific data metrics embedded into our marketplace, as well as try to offer really anything someone might need along the way when making a decision on whether they want to purchase an EV. That includes everything from the sale of an actual used EV to financing, to charger sales and, and home installation of a charger. Right now, uh, we have an experience center um, in Richmond, Virginia, but really can work with customers across the East Coast, especially because recently we, we started supporting other dealer partners to help them facilitate the sale of their EVs. If you want to move to the next slide, please. So here's just a quick look at a few things we try to illustrate for each vehicle. All of this information you'll be able to find on recharge.com. So we offer EV specific data points and a recharge score report that highlights things like battery health, vehicle history, and, and pricing relative to the rest of the market. This is really to build, um, like I mentioned before, on the fact that we want to build confident EV buyers. So people considering making the switch to electric actually feel comfortable doing so. All right, now, uh, now enough about recharged and we can move on to the fun stuff with tax laws. And as a disclaimer, I am, um, I am not an accountant. So I will just be giving information that we know uh, from what we've helped consumers over the uh, the last couple of months of supporting them with the point of sale tax credit. And we can also, um, after the fact, provide some of this information and some links to uh, the IRS as well on more specifics and guidelines regarding the, the clean vehicle tax credit. So there's been a really incredibly important change affecting the, the EV market, and that's the tax credit going to the point of sale starting January 1st, 2024. Previously, the benefits from the EV tax credit were only realized when someone was actually filing a tax return. And because it was a non-refundable tax credit, its full value wasn't actually always accessible, especially because a lot of people qualifying for the tax credit uh, might be receiving a refund where you actually had to owe the amount of the tax credit to be able to get it back. So this was really a huge change to be able uh, for consumers to actually be able to capture uh, the tax credit at the point of sale, which immediately lowers the purchase price. It helps consumers qualify for financing if they apply it to a down payment. And it also really just helps EVs become a, uh, a really affordable option. And in many cases, uh, way more affordable than comparable 
and turn off combustion engine vehicles. So here to dive into some of the specifics around the, the used clean vehicle tax credits to start. So beginning at the start of the year, uh, purchasing a qualified used electric vehicle for $25,000 or less from a licensed dealer could result in a tax credit of up to $4,000 or 30% of the sale price. Usually it's four, it, it's usually $4,000 unless the vehicle is um, priced somewhere below $13,000. Uh, which there aren't a ton of used EVs priced at, um, at that level today. The credit is really designed to make, uh, of course, EV ownership a bit more accessible. And um, there are different criteria that involve that I want to go over here to, to actually see what types of vehicles qualify and, and what um, different types of requirements are. So e EVs that qualify must be at least two years old, meaning that this year, it has to be model year 2022 or older. Next year, say in 2025, it will be model year 2023 and older. Income limits apply to this as well. So the thresholds are currently set at 150,000 for married couples filing jointly. It's at 112 and a half thousand for heads of households and 75,000 for all other filers. Buyers can use their adjusted gross income from the year you actually purchase the vehicle, which would technically be an estimate of your income for the year or the year prior. So the year prior is one where you should have a definite answer for, for the income where you're able to actually go back and check your last tax return. And you can do so by referring to form uh, 1040 and specifically line 11 to see if you if you qualify, but you can also qualify and capture the tax credit at the point of sale if you anticipate um, that you will fit the credit, um, fit the limits this upcoming year. Most of the time, if the vehicle fits the model year and the $25,000 limit, and you fit the income qualification, you likely do qualify for the tax credit. So, it's relatively simple on the use side, but still just to run through some of the other requirements that most of the time are hit if um, the previous things I mentioned uh, already apply. So you must be a um, you must be an individual who bought the vehicle for use and not for resale. So businesses do not apply to the used uh, clean vehicle tax credit. Uh, you cannot be the original owner of the vehicle, which you likely wouldn't be anyway. Uh, you cannot be claimed as a dependent on another person's tax return. You cannot have claimed the used clean vehicle credit in the last um, in the in the three years prior to purchase. And the vehicle credit could not have been transferred uh, after August 16, 2022 to a qualified buyer. And really, for that information, you would be relying on the seller or the dealer on providing you um, that type of information. It also has to be just for use primarily in the United States, which I think no one here is transporting theirs out of the country, but who knows? If we move on to the next slide here, we can take a look at some of the examples that actually qualify for the credit. E EV affordability is truly uh, now in reach for many. And I think with the credit, especially, it starts to be a more affordable, affordable option to begin with. Uh, at Recharge, two, two of our most popular models are the Tesla Model 3 and the Chevy Bolt. A number of them qualify for the tax credit, uh, and I'm highlighting some of them here. It's now possible to buy a Tesla Model 3 for about $20,000 and a Chevy Bolt for $12,000 after the credit. And I think it's really incredible to see how far we've come uh, with affordability in the space. Also, when the limit really went into effect, um, the $25,000 limit came into effect. It also pushed some sellers um, and pricing down quite a bit for ones that were hovering right around that mark. So consumers could actually qualify in many cases, um, which in turn also resulted in increased affordability across um, a wider range of models. And to move on here, we can jump right into the new clean vehicle tax credit. So 
the credit goes up a bit for um, new vehicles. It's up to 7,500 in, in tax incentives. Uh, the limits on vehicle pricing and income are also notably higher here. Uh, for cars, the, the cap on MSRP is 55,000 and for vans, SUVs and, and trucks, it's at 80,000. Uh, the adjusted gross income caps are, are higher as you see here. So it's 300,000 for, for married uh, filing jointly, 225,000 for the heads of household and 150,000 for all other filers. The same standards as the used EV tax credit apply here for um, which year you can take adjusted gross uh, income. So you can either, um, it can either be from this year or from last year. If you qualify one of those years, then you qualify for the tax credit. One of the differences with the new clean vehicle tax credit is that there are a lot more requirements for the manufacturer. So for used, almost all EVs, if they fit the price point in the year, they qualify. But here, the vehicle's assembly um, and actually matters for being in North America. And there are also different types of requirements for uh, critical mineral and, and battery components. And this was ultimately part of uh, the broader strategy in, in, in part of the same bill that introduced the tax credit and the Inflation Reduction Act to try to, to strengthen domestic manufacturing to some extent. And going through some of the more uh, specific requirements here. So this tax credit is available to, to businesses, unlike the used clean, uh, used clean credit. And the vehicle qualification depends, like I mentioned, on different critical mineral and battery components. So it's up to the seller to tell you which vehicles qualify, and the IRS does make it clear which, which do qualify. It also results in a number of models only fitting half of the criteria. So the credit ends up being 3750 instead of the full 7500. And to actually jump into which of the specific models qualify, we can see a, a list here on the on the next slide. So this year, the, the roster of qualifying vehicles it's, has seen a, um, a bit of a significant shift due to updated manufacturing and sourcing requirements from the government. Uh, this led to a reduction in a number of models being eligible. They're all shown here. Um, of course, a ton of um, most manufacturers are making changes to, to their supply chain to ensure that others uh, other makes and models that don't currently qualify will qualify. Notable models that do qualify include uh, the Chevy Bolt, the F-150 Lightning. Um, most of the Rivians qualify here and, and select Teslas. So it, the Tesla actually, the, the standard range and long range versions do not qualify right now. Um, although there are a bunch of changes being made and they're rolling out a new model uh, this year, a refreshed Model 3. And, and we do expect that eventually some of those models will qualify for at least half the credit. To move on here. Um, so it hasn't been that long since this has been in effect. And the US Treasury released some metrics last week on, um, on how many tax credits have actually been issued. So there's been 135 million so far distributed since the start of the year, or at least up to February 6th. That includes almost 25,000 uh, or more than 25,000 time of sale reports. The time of sale report is something that the seller of the vehicle, so the dealer uh, reports right at the, the, right at the point of sale and asks for your information and reports it to, to the IRS and the consumer essentially signs off on it, including signing off on that they stated their income accurately. It's it's not on the seller to um, it's not on the seller to to verify income in those situations. So it is on the on the buyer. Of those twenty five thousand time of sale reports, almost twenty thousand of them were advanced payments requested. So almost eighty percent of uh, purchasers opted to receive the credit at the point of sale. Some opted to delay it um, for whatever reason that they may have um, come up with. I'm not 
too sure on the on the value of, of delaying it, but um, I have heard some um, suggest doing that for for personal reasons or um, personal tax reasons. Of the the nineteen and a half thousand of advance payments requested, the vast majority have been attributed to to new electric vehicles, um, and only included about two thousand uh, used EVs. There's now eight thousand dealers registered to receive advance payments. Uh, I hope that number does does climb with time as as more dealers do start to to operate with the tax credit. But it's it's good to see that there's been. Uh, pretty strong adoption, especially in the, the first month and a half year of, of the credit. And recharge is certainly um, one of those as well and does provide the, the tax credit to, to our customers. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, thank you guys all for, for coming. Alan, thanks for that quick description and laying out there. Um, so now I want to open the floor uh, for people's questions. Um, if you want to use the raise your hand function, uh, that'd be great. And if you don't know how to use that, feel free to write your question in the chat. Um, I'll ask, well, uh, Matt Wade, feel free to unmute. Thank you, Greg. Thank you, Al. That was very informative. It's awesome to see that so many uh, sales are already utilizing this tax credit. Uh, I heard similar uh, data from the IRS uh, and the Department of Energy last week uh, uh, at our <clears throat> Energy Independence Summit. So very exciting to see that this is really, we're seeing a strong uptake. Um, I kind of have a question about your website in like the recharge score. I was trying to determine like what goes into that recharge score is there any way you could go back and explain some of those <laughs> those uh components or yeah no absolutely so right now the recharge score consists of uh, a few different metrics primarily battery health uh vehicle history and market pricing so market pricing for example looks at the price of that vehicle relative to other similar vehicles in the market and um, scores it along those lines. Um, looking at vehicle history, so that takes into account more basic items that you would find on a Carfax report, for example, looking at the number of owners um, and accidents that that vehicle has had, as well as looking at the, the battery health, which I think most consumers care about. So we use different ways to, to really measure battery health. There's diagnostics tools that we use uh, to actually plug into um, to the vehicle and um, there's also some other things that we do to try to calculate real range at 100% for vehicles that we might not have access to right now or might be sitting with a, a dealer partner of ours. Awesome. Thank you. If anybody else doesn't have any questions, I got another one. Um, it's right one in. Fire away. Um, <laughs> yeah. um, so now that we have this direct pay uh, component to uh, the tax credits, are you seeing any um, usage of by nonprofits or by local governments or state agencies? Like, is there any is there any effort or any interest from nonprofits or direct pay? Or, I guess my question is: This is a whole new field of direct or elective pay for nonprofits and and governments to utilize this tax credit where do you see that going or have you seen any interest in it so we we have not um so we primarily deal with you used uh used evs and i mean that's part of the reason why uh we haven't so i'm not quite sure um honestly and you you might have more insight into into that than i than i do we haven't dealt with with nonprofits so far yeah i think it's just so brand new that uh, everyone's still figuring out how to register on the IRS website um, or to qualify for that. Matt yeah. freezes sometimes. He'll be back. And if, if, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Because these are used, they, it may not, they may not need to go through the IRS website. So. We, so have, we, we have to submit every transaction through the IRS website when we are uh, when we're filing at the at the time of sale. We just haven't specifically worked with um, 
some some of those parties that that you mentioned. So if there's any local governments or nonprofits on this call, like Virginia Clean Cities or I don't know, uh, local governments, reach out to Alan and he can help you with your tax questions on these on these vehicles. We had a question come in um, in the chat and says, if someone expects to have the full $4,000 uh, tax burden at the time of purchase, but ends up not having the tax burden at the end of the year, what happens then? So I think one of the great things that happened with uh, the point of sale tax credit is that that, um, that rule kind of got wiped away. That primarily applied pre-2024, um, where it the tax burden doesn't matter anymore because you captured it at the point of sale and you're no longer recognized. If, if you opt to defer your tax credit and try to file it for when you're filing taxes and you don't have a $4,000 burden, you're not gonna get the credit. But from what, from our understanding is that regardless of what your tax return looks like, you're able to capture it at the point of sale regardless if you meet all the other requirements. Great, great. Um, looks like Sarah, you raised your hand. I did. Um, I don't have a question about the tax incentive, but I do have a question about selling EVs in the used car space. Um, one of the questions that uh, I hear the most when people are looking to buy an EV is like, how am I gonna charge it? And I know that most new vehicles come with like a level one charger in the trunk. Is that something that the used vehicles are also coming with or is that like an extra expected cost? Yeah, so our, our EVs do come with the level one charger included. So same, same thing as buying a, um, a new, although we do encourage buyers to install if, if, they, if they're able to at home, um, actually install a level two charger and we offer through through various partners the ability to get a live quote for what installing a home charger would actually cost and wrap it into part of the really the, the buying experience and allow customers to finance that uh, as as part of the the purchase as well. Since the the level one chargers do tend to be quite slow. Awesome, thank you, Bruce. Business model is great, and this was much needed in uh, the Richmond area, but also other areas of the country. My question is not really related to tax questions, but uh, you've been in business for a little while. What kind of customer trends are you seeing? You know, a lot of the early adopters bought EVs a few years ago. Are you starting to see other groups of people uh, curious and starting to buy EVs, and how much education? Do you have to do at point of sale? Yeah, absolutely. So most of our customers, almost 90% of our customers are first time EV buyers. So we do really try to focus on that segment. We call that type of customer group, the, the EV curious, where people reach out, not really knowing whether they want to buy an EV and are kind of just starting the process to see whether it's right for them. And those are the really the types of folks that we try to um, to focus on because if we can cater the experience to them, then we certainly can um, do do quite well with different types of buyers, whether it be second time buyers who most of the time know what they actually want. I had a question. Um, if someone that wants to trade in a vehicle that the but they're trading in. Uh, maybe a gas vehicle, does that affect the purchase or does it not matter at all? Related to the the tax credit or just um, our, so we, yeah, well. Um, tax so credit we'll, and a recharged. Just in, no, no to both. So okay, cool. Certainly able to take a, a nice vehicle as well. Okay, cool. Um, well, if, if we don't have any other questions, um, Oh, we got one coming through in the, in the chat. Oh, <laughs> we encourage everyone to contact your utilities. Thanks, Cassandra. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, if we don't have any other questions, um, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up.
Thank you guys for all coming. This will be online for any questions and the presentation will be online as well to access. Feel free to reach out to me, Gregory Brennan at Virginia Clean Cities or Matt Wade at Virginia Clean Cities for questions with the EV tax credit um, and we can we can help you out there. Um, that's it. Thank you guys so much for coming. We'll uh, hopefully see you soon. Thanks, everyone.